Okay, I previously tried to record um, this video, but it did not take, so I'm gonna, even though everything's written out, I'm gonna rewrite it. So the first thing that we need to know is they're giving us the domains of F, but then they're asking us to find the domains of F inverse. And these will not coincide if you just find the, the inverse. Notice that this inverse doesn't have any square roots and it doesn't have any x's in the denominator. However, the domain is not negative infinity infinity like it should be, okay? And that's because of this property up here. The domain of f will match the range of the inverse and the range of f will match the domain of the inverse. Why is that? Because in order to find inverses, you're interchanging the x's and the y's which is why this guy's domain is the other guy's range. And then this guy's range is the other guy's domain, okay? And so that's the property that we're gonna use to find the domain of the inverse. We're gonna actually be finding the ranges of F to figure out what the domain of F inverse should be. And so what I've done for each of these problems is I created a table using the F function, so not the inverse function, and then I use these values. So I need to plug in three and then numbers bigger than three. So I plugged in three, 20, a thousand, I could have plugged in a million, whatever. Then I plugged each of these numbers into F and found the corresponding Y values. Notice that the Y value starts at zero and goes to infinity. So I put zero to infinity. And depending on the end point marker here, that's going to be the exact end point marker that I use there because on the graph, there's a point at three comma zero, and it's a solid point because of this bracket here. And so then if the point is solid, then of course the Y coordinate is going to be included as well, okay? So then after I figured out the domain of F inverse, then I went to go figure out what did F inverse actually look like. So I changed this to the Y, I interchanged the X and the Ys, and then I started to solve for y. So I squared both sides to get rid of the house, then I added the six over, and then I divided by the two. Once y was all by itself, I could turn that into the f inverse, and then I had the expression for the f inverse. Same thing over here. I did this part first, so I noticed that the range was from negative infinity to two, which means I start at two, and then I plug things going toward the negative infinity direction. So that meant like zero and then some negative numbers. And I tried to pick some relatively large numbers. So this is where I'm starting and then this is going toward negative infinity, just like this says. Now when I plug each of these values into this function, these are the Y values that I found. Now notice that the Y values start at 10 and they get bigger and bigger and bigger, which means they will go eventually toward infinity. So they start at 10 and it goes toward positive infinity. But the end point here was included with a bracket. So that means that my end point 10 should be included with a bracket. Infinities will always get parentheses, okay? Now, how do I find the actual inverse? Change the f of x notation to y. Notice that the rest of it's the same. Then interchange the x's and the y's. So now you get this equation. And then start solving for y. First, I got to get the house by itself by minusing 10 to the other side. Then I got rid of the house by squaring both sides. And then in order to square this, I ended up with this. And then I minus 2 on both sides, so I ended up with this equation. And then I divided by negative 1, which ends up changing the sign of every single term on both sides. Now that I had y all by itself, I could change that back into f inverse and then put this as the answer. Same thing for the last one, I did this first. So it starts at zero and goes toward positive infinity. And as I plug each of these numbers into the function, I get these y values. And these y values are starting at two and going toward positive infinity. And because this had a bracket on the endpoint, I'm gonna have a bracket on the endpoint. And then I went over here to go find the inverse. So change the f of x to y interchange the x and y's, and then start solving for y. So I minus two, then I took the square root of the x minus two, and I got y by itself. So I have two possibilities here. I have y equals the square root of x minus two, and then y equals the negative square root of x minus two. Um, so we had two different values here. Now, um, 
let me see. So I outruled this one because of the positive. You wanted to have positive value. So this was the one that I used as the final answer. And why did I use that? Because this is why. We know that the domain of F is supposed to equal the range of F inverse. So then if the domain of F is this, that means it's going from zero to infinity. That means positive Y values only for F inverse. But if I take this function, notice that no matter what I plug in for X, I'm gonna get a negative Y value for this function. But here, no matter what I plug in for X, as long as I plug in the domain values in, I will get a number back out, okay? And it will be positive. So this is the one that I have to take the answer and not the negative one. And it all had to do with this property and being able to decipher that, okay? So if you do plus or minus, look at your domain of F because that's gonna tell you what your range of F inverse is gonna look like. And so what should your Y values be? Should your Y values be positive or should your Y values be negative? Okay.